Welcome, Faith family, to our after-sermon discussion today. Um, I'm here with Dan Herbster and um, my Your name's Mike, Mike Workman. Workman. Yeah, he says go. we're going to be doing a, a, just an audio only. Um, great sermon today. Mm-hmm. And I, I was telling you before the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, b- before we got going, that he really did throw me off on his note taking. He loves to mix uh, it up and but, keep us guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a good way because it did make me come to a lot of the conclusions before uh, he got to the note points. But I, I want to start off like we do is just, Dan, what what blessed you today from here? And I know there's a lot. Yeah, oh, there, there were so many good points that he made from from the text. But just the one that just I really carry away with me is that like, don't be surprised when you suffer. Um, uh, don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. It's part of living in a fallen world. And we have, uh, from this passage, we have assurance from Peter uh, in the, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that, that suffering is part of the Christian life, and, and God intends that. Uh, he has a purpose in it all, and, uh, and it helps us understand uh, the true gospel versus uh, false gospels, and one of which we have in the world today is the prosperity gospel. Mm-hmm. People who say that God's plan is that you have health, wealth, and prosperity and everything that you want in this life or your best life now. And we need passages like this help us understand that that is a false gospel, right. um, that, that God has um, a purpose for our suffering in this life. And we know that uh, we, we, we have confidence of that because we know that he used suffering, uh, the suffering of Christ to, to make redemption possible for us so that we can be confident that he has great good uh, for us in store. So don't be shocked. Uh, and, and then I encourage people, if you haven't listened to the sermon, listen through. There's so many good truths for yeah. dealing with suffering. Yeah, I, you know, I knew this was going to be the first question I asked, and I was just, there's just so much in here today. I, 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 so to just, uh, maybe just to wrap it up, the application. Not only, you know, I think the first one was no matter how hot the crucible I've been spared from the hottest. Mm. And, and as a believer, I, I should know that, but I need to be reminded. But the last one, the last one, my salvation rests not on how well I endure this trial, this flames, but on how well Jesus did. Yes. And you, you, you're talking about putting all this to rest for me personally was I can hang on that. Even when I don't go through the 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 fiery furnace or the trial the way I should mm-hmm. uh, knowing that my savior did and and that that's a huge blessing uh, to me personally and just a comfort more than anything well let me let me ask you this um, maybe this is a little bit more personal but have you ever been through this type of trial or a fiery trial and and if so, how do we glorify God during these trials? Yeah, uh, I'll just I'll just um, share a couple of big ones, in between ones, and just you know the daily ones. Like so, the the I guess when when I think of a, a fiery trial, the one that comes to mind is when my father uh, had a stroke suddenly, oh about ten years ago, and uh, eventually passed away uh, in the hospital. And that was a hard time. It was definitely a time of suffering, uh, dealing with that. And uh, but yet yeah, we could. Uh, my, my mother, my sister, and I, and uh, we could just give great testimony how God's grace was sufficient during that time. We knew that he had a plan. We were surrounded by love from our um, uh, physical family and especially our spiritual family, our local church at the time, which was just an encouragement. Um, but yeah, the God's sovereignty in our suffering uh, was a great uh, encouragement to us. And in fact, we wondered how could people get through this not knowing that there's a good God who has some good behind this. And of course, we knew our, my dad was with the Lord and it was encouraging to see some of the lives that he had touched in his, in his time. And, and and in some ways, at least in my, people, everyone's different how they handle suffering. Sometimes severe suffering like that can really shake their faith. For us, it was like, it was almost easy to run to God in that time because there's no other ch- choice but to rely on the Lord. Um, you know, kind of the low grade, long term one is, um, you know, not that it's like, you know, the same as that kind of suffering, but, you know, just being a single man for into my 30s, you know, not not being married. That was a form and desiring to be married. That was a oh. form of suffering, you know, whether it's being teased in the army for being, oh, you're a virgin. That's so funny. That's cute. Or um, just all the different uh, struggles that go along with that, knowing that, yeah, the Lord has a. Uh, a purpose even in this and uh, hopefully you've been a good steward of that 
And uh, obviously, God sometimes gives the gift of singleness, so there's no promise there at all. Right. Um, but uh, I am thankful that it looks like the Lord is finally <laughs> yeah, answering that yeah. prayer. But that is that could be just something like a one of those low grade, long term simmering things that you just have to deal with and 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 get your eyes on the Lord. Sometimes, though, the the suffering that bothers me the most and it shouldn't is just the little inconveniences and disappointments of ordinary life. life yeah. Like some inconsiderate person blasting their subwoofer outside my house when I'm trying to sleep at 3 in the morning. Or bad, they're just terrible drivers that inconvenience me and endanger others. And I can just get unwarranted anger over just like, yeah. And it, but even as simple as that is, that is a reminder that we live in a fallen world. Right. Or whether it is just that, I mean, I don't, we don't live in a country yet where we're persecuted for our faith like, say, the Christians in Afghanistan are being persecuted by the Taliban. But, you know, even those low grade, just people looking down on you because you really do believe in, in Jesus and you really do believe the moral teachings of the Bible. That is a, a kind of a low grade suffering we've got to do. But your second question is, how do we gl- glorify God in suffering? Well, it's, it's through faith, by believing God. God is glorified when his creatures that he has redeemed uh, through the gospel when they trust him even in spite of suffering. And it's either earlier or uh, other places here in First Peter. Peter talks about the trying of your faith produces a faith that is more precious than gold. God is glorified by that faith when we just simply believe and continue to trust in God, even though we don't have all the explanation for our suffering in the short term, even though the suffering does, isn't pleasant, us uh, just simply believing. Now, of course, if we're having that faith, that's going to affect how we live. So mm-hmm. we're going to continue to, to seek to obey God morally do, do, while we're doing suffering. We're going to seek to be a blessing to others and be faithful to what we know God has called us because of our faith. Um, and that is how we glorify God, is by continuing to trust him even when he leads us through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. You know, I was, I was thinking, we, Connie and I, my wife and I, went through um, one not too long ago and it was based on um, what we believe Scripture said, and uh, what we under what we know that Scripture said. And um, as we went through that, we we knew what our response would be. Um, but I don't think in in that we never wavered on that. We wanted to be faithful to what Scripture taught. But the fallout, mm. I, I guess, uh, is it was more of the trial. We we um, weren't going to be able to have some of the um, same connections or relationships mm-hmm. that we had in the past. We obviously are decision, I think, disappointed people. Um, and what, I think what's so interesting about these trials is what doesn't bother you might just crush me and mm-hmm. vice versa. Mm-hmm. And so, going through this, I, I could see that how it was, you know, really hurt, really hurting my wife. But knowing the whole time, she knew the whole time, and I knew the whole time that we had to be faithful to to Scripture. And uh, and so, as we went through it, one of the things that you you just said is how do we as uh, uh, believers glorify God? It, obviously, faith. Like you said, the, the other thing that, that I did was is I just once again reread what I was making a stand on mm. and understanding that that is the Word of God. Mm. It's not about me, and it wasn't even about you, you know the statement that maybe people felt like we were making or things like that, but it, it was about the Word of God and was it sufficient and efficient to, to you know, work through itself through this situation, and, and we believed it did. That was comfort. And let me tell you something else, too, is people who, are, uh, outside of my normal group, ministered to us in Connie. And that was that was very encouraging. So one of the things I think I would tag onto this is when we know that someone in our in the body is suffering, even if we may not feel like that's something I would suffer about or that's not the trial, man, pour into them, mm-hmm. encourage them. Uh, that because that was a huge thing for me. So a lot of lessons for me, and that that's the other thing. 
the lessons that you learn from going through this. I don't look forward to them. I, I'd mm -hmm. be very honest. I'm sitting back there just sweating because I know <laughs> another one's coming. Yeah. But to be able to take comfort in, like he said, that um, <laughs> Christ, uh, God controls the heat, and it's to rid myself, uh, to rid these things of the dross in my life. Yeah. So, all right. Well, Faith Family, I sure do appreciate you you listening um, and being a part of this. Uh, think on these things, meditate on these things, because if you're not in, in, in that trial right now, you're either coming out of one or you're getting ready to go into one. And, and like uh, Pastor Kyle said, let's be prepared. Let's be prepared. So we love you, and we'll see you here next week.